We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello? some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause it's the nose blank. Well, hi guys. Welcome back to the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. I'm so excited about my guest today. We're going to talk about pie. <laughs> anyway, before we get to that, hey, hey, thanks for watching or listening. However you're you're taking in this podcast, please take a second to like, follow, and subscribe because then you'll know when new episodes are coming up and, uh, and, and it makes the podcast feel really special. So however you're watching, there's going to be a little button somewhere around the screen that says like, follow, or subscribe. Push the button and see what happens. You could get pie. I'm Kristen Key, and I'm the host of this crazy mess. You can find me through my website, kristenkey.com. There you can follow me on all my social media. Um, you can support this show and all my shows by joining the Patreon. Oh, the Patreon is so much fun. Um, I do scavenger hunts when I'm on the road. Um, I bring back souvenirs for my Patreons. There's a lot of fun stuff, so join the Patreon. Also, I'm on Cameo. So if you want to give the unique gift of me... Join my cameo. I wrote a, I, I write a song for everybody who, who gets a cameo from me. Now, my guest today is the winner of the Seattle Comedy Competition. He also has a very funny dry bar special, and he loves pie. Hey, computer lady, play that interview with Kermit Apio. Playing interview with Kermit Apio. So nice to see you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, my God, Kermit. Thank you for coming on. How fun. I haven't seen you since Vegas, right? It's been a year, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy that's been a year. Yeah, how have you been? You been good? I have, I have. Yeah, I've been relatively busy. Uh, uh, but yeah, and you're, yourself, you look like you've been really busy. You've been moving Man, around. yeah, I, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden work just, just started raining down on me, and I don't know how to say no, because as comics, yeah. a full calendar is a good calendar, you know? Absolutely. Yes, I understand that. So it's really fun. So we found out we have uh, we have a friend in common, a mu our mutual friend. Uh, uh, my mentor in comedy, Kelly Moran, was an old friend of yours. Yeah, I knew him before he moved to Texas. I moved. I, I I met him when he was here in Seattle. So crazy, so crazy. Such a small world because for me in my career, like I would not be a stand-up comedian if I had not a bumped into him, or sought him out, kind of. Because it, it's a big part of my story was, you know, I I found him and then he led me to the open mic and then he said something nice, and then <laughs> I've been a stand-up comedian ever since. Like I dropped out of college that same week. I was like, oh my god, someone thinks I'm funny. Um, <laughs> And you knew him in such a different way. You knew him as a as a comic comic. Yeah, as a comic who actually got people out of comedy. He actually actually <laughs> comedy. It was a whole different life in Seattle. <laughs> That's that, that is strangely that does sound like Kelly as well. <laughs> no, he was he was just a great headliner and always hung out at the uh, at the open mics and everything. Just loved being around comedy. Yeah, and uh, it was really fun. And then he went to Texas and actually got into the uh, comedy club side of it. So. It, yeah, it was too very. Which was fun. a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea for, for, especially for a comic to own a comedy club. But I'm so glad that he did make that terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Yes. So I, the reason I do this this podcast is I got you know I, I missed the like fellowship of other comedians when in pandemic we were all doing Zoom shows. We never got to hang out in green rooms, and so this show kind of became my way of. I love what comics do when they're not comedians and in a green room, you find out like what a comedian's into, whether it's a TV show or a hobby. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I always ask the guests before the show, what are a few things, you know, that you're super into or, or knowledgeable about so we can chit chat about it. And I, I'm always surprised. I'm always surprised when I think it's going to be one thing you said pie. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, how can pie be a passion or a hobby? But let's find out. Well, the, uh, I'll tell you this. The other night we had a, I had a gig and a dinner was included. And it was, it was actually a pretty nice dinner. So uh, after the show, we're sitting, we're having dinner. And, and, the, and our server came by and said, uh, we, have, we have a dessert. And it was, it was like a, it, it wasn't like a lot of choices dinner. It was so, so there was, there was a, the two choices for entrees. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a restaurant thing. Right, right, right. But it, was, it was a very nice dinner. So she said, well, we have a, a lovely cake for dessert, like a raspberry cake. And I, and I said, I'm good. Everybody else had their cake. I said, and she said, you don't want any cake? I said, no, nah, I'm not much of a cake person. And uh, I said, uh, I'm, I'm more of a, a pie person, but I, and I'm not ordering. I'm not trying to order. They didn't have it, but I, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying I'm more of a pie person. And the comic across the table from me, who I don't know well, I've worked with twice, goes, 
oh, really? You're in a pie. I've never heard that on any social media of yours whatsoever. <laughs> and, and, and all three of all three of us started cracking up. Like he barely knew me and knew that I'm like this big pie fan. You're a pie head. I mean, I don't know what the name for it is. A pie enthusiast. We'll go with pie head. I like pie head. I had pie over the weekend. You know, it's funny that you mentioned it. I'm just like, yeah, pie is delicious. But but uh, how far back does this go? Why? I almost want to, it seems like a, such a stupid question. Why the passion for pie? But pie is great. Right. So, right. Uh, but I'll let you tell me. Well, that's so that's the thing. People love pie, right? It's, it's yeah. People, very few people you said you mentioned pie and they go, oh, I don't don't even talk about that. I mean, people like pie. So, but for me, it was it was getting on the road. Okay, you're you're traveling these towns after the show i don't like eating before the show so so you wind up at like a denny's in the middle of nowhere because it's the only thing open in that town and um and so you're having a lot of denny's on the road not that not that i hate denny's but i was in my 20s i had to do the cheapest thing possible so it was either a mini mart or denny's and and i and i realized that when i had a slice of pie at Denny's, I actually felt a lot better. It was, it was you know, and it, and it became like this thing on the road that that even if you're in a Denny's or a Perkins or whatever, there's a decent slice of pie to be had. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's Denny's entree isn't going to knock you over and it's like going to be the greatest thing you ever eat. But a piece of pie can always be good no matter where you are. Why is that? There's definitely like a blue, a blue ribbon pie stands out, but just a regular old run of the mill pie is pretty freaking good. Right, right. And then when you're when you're on the road, and and especially at that point, you, you know, when you first start going on the road, you don't know what this is going to be. You don't know if, if this is going to be a career for very long. This might just be your your backpacking through Europe for one year. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Or I'm I'm gonna die. I'm I'm probably I may not survive this. I don't know that I can drink this much and live through my twenties. It was a lot of my thoughts. It's just like right. pie would have been a luxury. It's like oh, right. if I could make it to pie, I've I've made it. <laughs> That's exactly right. You get you get this little happiness that says at least there's a constant in my life. At least, at least there's something that I know will happen. I don't even know if I'm going to have a good show tomorrow night, but at least I know I'm going to have a slice of pie. And it became like this. <laughs> It became a it's, lifeline on the road. Like that little kid like playing softball. Well, hey guys, it's okay. We all get Pizza Hut after. <laughs> Which was me. Yeah, that's how I played softball. Guys, it's okay. You don't take it too seriously. Everybody gets Pizza Hut at the end. I, I never thought of it that way. That was my little, yeah, you're going to have pizza. You're going to yeah. be okay, little buckaroo. Just Win or lose, show. I'm going to get that pizza. Because they said, all of us, we all get the pizza. Losers and winners. So it's okay, Kristen. It's okay. Oh, I like that. I like that so much. That is the analogy. So that was it. And it, it kind of grew into a thing. And then in social media, uh, it was it was kind of a neat thing that people sort of related to, right? I'd always put little posts about pie or little pie jokes. Or if I was someplace where I was having a good slice of pie, I'd, I'd sort of, you know, talk about it or whatever. So it became it became a thing and it kind of grew beyond just me. Everybody, I'm sure, wants to know what your all-time favorite slice of pie is. What's the best pie? If you had to look back and go, if I could just eat that pie well, again, I'd be a whole man. I was so surprised that I didn't really have an answer to that question. And so one day I was on stage and and and, and a guy asked me that. I said, I said, well, you know what? It's kind of like my kids. Uh, you pick <laughs> one, but you don't talk about it. You know, you definitely like one, but you don't, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but I felt bad that that was my only, all I could do is make a goofy joke, right? So here's what I, here's what I, I, I will tell you to answer the question. I have three specific pies that I will mention if, if you, if you will indulge me here. Um. <laughs> okay, let's, we're getting into the meat of this pie. Okay. So, uh, many people know I was born and raised in Hawaii on the island of Kauai. There's a place called Omoide. O-M-O-I-D-E bakery, and they make a lily koi chiffon pie. Lily koi is passion fruit. And yes, it is. So it's very, it's chiffon. So the slices are like that high. What? But very light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best pies I've ever had. Um, I can't even wrap, like my cheeks hurt just now thinking about it. It makes like that part of your mouth go, I don't even know what that flavor is, but it's, it, it hurts. <laughs> well, and that was the thing. People, people who I've recommended, who have gone to koi, I recommend it, will we'll try it. And, I, and I'm interested in hearing what they think of that flavor because I used to pick lily koi off trees and eat. So when I eat that pie, it, it reminds me of childhood, right. you know, it is a very interesting pie and it's amazing. The second pie is, um, it's called the ABC pie. It's at a place called Traverse city uh, in Michigan. I'm going there in September. I'm going to have this pie. Okay. Okay. 
I think it's called, I believe it's called the Traverse City Pie Company. They have a thing called the ABC Pie, which is apple, blueberry, and cherry. And it doesn't sound right. It doesn't, as a matter of fact, I had to be talked into trying it and it became one of my favorite pies. Okay. It is amazing. Just the way they mix the three, there's not too much of one. It all works. And then the crust they make, the way they make this sort of flaky uh, crust thing on top yeah. is incredible. So, I'm going to try the pie. Uh, I believe you 100%. I'm going to go. And I, I've never yes. really, I don't, I can't think of a bad pie I've had, just it's less good. Much. But yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then the third one, it's going to sound weird, but Sitka, Alaska Airport. <laughs> you never, I, I could actually be there at some point. I'm going to Alaska this week. And, and you know what? When I've worked the cruise ships in Alaska, I've actually taken a cab to the airport to go have pie. <laughs> and the, and the, and the, the cafe is actually in, it's before security. So you, so I was doing, I do some pro pie jokes in my show. And this guy said, have you tried the pie at the airport? I said, no, I haven't. He goes, you have to try the pie. And I said, but my flight goes out like 4.30 in the morning. He goes, then eat pie at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> he goes, he goes <laughs> I'm not kidding. He said, go eat some pie. So I did. I, I actually, I got like two hours sleep in the hotel, went there. I had a, a peanut butter chocolate pie. Yes. It was, it was absolutely one of my favorite pies. Uh, oh my so, God. so, so when people do ask me the question, I have a very long answer, but I don't have a favorite favorite, but I have three places where it was, uh, the top like those those are the best three pies i've had what i love about your initial answer is that you take pies so passionately you do talk about it like your children well i can't really have a favorite because i love them all differently and that to me i think speaks to your your piousness <gasps> oh. <laughs> whoa. whoa how have i never thought of that <laughs> But yes, that's it's so it's not like it's not like I have this one flavor because I do. I just I love pie. But if there's three experiences, right, where I just wasn't just having pie, where I was experiencing something, it's those three I just mentioned. That's incredible. And I love that there's like now like there's a traveling pie adventure for me to go on, like a, a pie scavenger hunt. And it's also very ironic that I'm gonna be in at least two of these places in Amazing. the next few months. And so Amazing. I'm gonna try to check these off. Like my wife does baseball stadiums. I'm gonna try recommended pies. It's way, way, way more my speed. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing. I'm a big baseball fan as well, but but yes, it's it's really fun to, cause you know, you go on the road and a lot of the times, if you're, especially if you're at a club where you're there for three, four days or more, you have some time. So it is right. something like, go check out or ask people or, or go online and and uh who, what's your favorite slice of pie in this town it's a very easy thing to ask and it's something most people do have an opinion of. that's funny i'm gonna start asking comedians that before the show or during like we all have something we do when we get to a town's kind of, i go to diners i like to find a diner i'm a big diner person and because i i kind of know about what i'm gonna get but there's an ambiance and so that's the thing that i look for where's the, what's your what's the best diner in town because I'm going to go sit there and you get some good answers and some of I mean, you get some like, oh, this place only has two tables in it and it <laughs> smells weird, but it's the best. I'm like, that's my diner. So yes. that's interesting. You find the pie. When it comes to meals, non-chains are the best experiences on the road. I don't want to yeah. eat at a chain at all when I'm on the road. As a free, like frequent traveler, it's like that is the perk of our job. And I think... Like back when I used to drink, not so much. I didn't care. I was Taco Bell every night because that's a whole different adventure to go on. But now that I'm sober and I have time to kill and energy and some curiosity, it is nice to find the local hidden gyms in a town, you know, because every town has them. It's time for five quick questions. This is a podcast in three parts. We chit chat for a little bit. I ask you five quick questions and then we're going to do a Mad Lib. And so I've got five quick questions for you. Just question number one, you're offered three times your highest rate that you've ever been played, uh, that you've ever been paid to play a nudist resort naked. Do you take the gig? Uh, no. I don't, okay. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I just, um, uh, is it the money? Could I pay you more? <laughs> no, it's actually not the money. I mean, because that would be a substantial amount of money, but it's, it, it, it really is. So when I'm a relatively insecure person, when I'm on stage, I feel like I don't really have control of this, that it could snap at any minute. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, sure. It sounds like I'm the only one talking and everybody's laughing at this, but I feel like I say one word or somebody says one, one tag funnier than my punchline and it's over. They all they all stand up and laugh at me at me instead of with me and walk out. You know what I mean? Like I I need eight million things to be right or or I'm worried. <laughs> you know, like and and so, having your ass out would like it would throw you. Oh, completely. It would, it, I, I I couldn't do comedy though. It, it would just somewhere 
somewhere between, you know, <laughs> apologizing and, and, and just. Let's okay. I've never asked this. I'm just curious. So how many articles of clothing would you like, we'll do it like strip comedy. Like, could you perform <laughs> barefoot? <laughs> um, I, I will say one time I uh, forgot <laughs> to put shoes in my suitcase and I didn't realize that till I got to the gig. And so I did do, uh, uh, I did do a show in slippers and a blazer. <laughs> How did you feel? Were you okay? I felt awful. You thought about it the awful. whole time. Yeah. I... I've got it. They were staring at my feet. In my head, they're staring at my feet. They don't hear a word I'm saying. I've done stand up in tennis shoes once. And the same thing. I'm like, I, I, it's like, oh, clearly I don't care about this gig because I'm wearing these sneakers. I mean, because I don't give a shit about you or myself. Like, I'm a fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What a great answer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you die and uh, you find out that your judgment is based on your recent browser history. Are you going to the good place or the bad place? Wow. Uh, yeah. By the way, you, that could be recent or past history, really? It's all... Well, it's up to you. Have you cleared it? It's like, does St. Peter know, like, all of it? Or the, like, if I clear it every hour, is that, like, confession? Like, I don't know. I don't make the rules to this. So this is kind of based on your own personal... <laughs> well... So I am going to the bad place. And yes, for the obvious reasons, you all know. <laughs> but when you're in comedy, there's a lot of bad place searches that is, I'm just working. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that's 100% of them, but I'm saying there's a lot where I look and I go, what the hell? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, I was going to do a uh, I was thinking of writing. I was doing something and it was going to have this. And I had to look up something really kind of horrific or creepy, right? And I wasn't actually looking it up i was trying to make sure i got the joke right or if the joke works or whatever you know what i mean I, it's hard to explain no the other day i had to google what a grundle was because i'd heard the word from another comedian but i didn't know and so now i've got a lot of grundle searches and do you know what that is <laughs> uh no i don't it's it's the hair between a man's uh uh testicles and anus it's a patch of hair it's called a grundle i didn't know but someone would use it and i i didn't want to seem stupid like i didn't know what it was so i'm like googling it now my browser history has a whole bunch of taint shit. why right right exactly <laughs> why, why would we name that um I, who needs to reference it i don't know because maybe because women have a merkin we needed a merkin and grundle and now they sound like mythical creatures yeah, i was you know <clears throat> there was a there was a Debbie Gibson, um, AARP did a, did a virtual concert with Debbie Gibson, right? And it, when you're my age group, you think teen sensation Debbie Gibson. Yeah. Right? So I was trying, I was trying to uh, uh, do a little joke Facebook post about that, right? So I was trying to think, of, well, who would, who would that compare it to to someone now? And about 10 minutes into this, trying to figure out how to make this little, and really not even for my act, for Facebook joke. I spent about 15 minutes, and then I realized I've been searching teen, uh, uh, teen girl singers. <laughs> and I went, oh, crap. <laughs> right? So I literally had to like stop. That joke's not worth that. And, um, but yeah, so there are times where, where uh, and like I said, not 100% of the browser, but there are times where I'm going to get faulted for stuff that's really not what it looks like. This is going to be fun. I hope our judgment <laughs> is so we can have like, but let me explain. I was writing a song and I needed something ran with, with bundle and, and I, you know, grundle sounded, I, I just have to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question number three, this is, we're starting to get weird now. Question number three. Um, choose a new profession, but that profession has to fight other professions in a death match using only the tools of their trade. What is your new profession and why would you win? Okay, you got to pick a new job. You're not a comedian anymore. Pick any other job in the world, but you have to fight in a death match with some other profession using only the tools of your trade. So I usually go with gynecologists because you have a lot of metal instruments that seem to hurt. And so I feel like I could fight a lawyer off pretty good. Oh, wow. That is a tricky question. There's like a million. Wouldn't you just, wouldn't I just choose something that has weaponry in it? Oh, you absolutely <laughs> could. You absolutely could. Yeah. But, but would it be something that I'd be able to do? Or, I think that's or, important. Or, something you think, I, oh man, that sucks. Why do I just immediately go to gynecologist? I'm like, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I'd be a very competent guy. I don't need schooling. I just know how to use a, a tool. Before I did comedy, I was in the liquor department at United Airlines. Oh, 
so there are many sizes of bottles that I could throw or I could offer drinks to an enemy. <laughs> Here, take a shot. I've got, I've got tiny bottles. Which one do you want? We could combine them. This gynecologist would be rendered useless after, right. Right. after I faced so, the alcohol right. sheriff. So I'll, I'll, I'll friend up with you and then, and, and, and give you some, uh, you know, give you some complimentary mini liquor bottles. And, and then uh, when they're empty, I'll, I'll just toss them at your face. <laughs> Alcohol's dangerous. It can be very dangerous. <laughs> Question number four. Now we're getting really bizarre. We're getting more bizarre. Um, you're kidnapped and entered into a pie eating contest. For your life, how many pies could you eat? We're talking full or slices? Full. Full, full. pies. Man. I could do two now, but I would pay for it for days. Two I, I pies. You're going to live. You're going <laughs> to live. I love it. That's, and I just oh. love, like, some people have more determination than other people. I still, like, I know me. I'm like, I could probably eat three slices. <laughs> and then, yeah, be like, mm, I'm getting full, you know. But two pies, I think you've got a fighting chance at this. Okay, okay, question number five. I don't know why you keep getting kidnapped. You're kidnapped. <laughs> and forced into a karaoke contest for your life. What song do you sing? You know, so I've watched a lot, uh, but I don't sing at those things. I love just hanging out, listening and, and you know, uh, but I've thought about it and it's going to be something like Bust a Move by Young MC from the 90s. And the reason is because number one, it's rapping, so I don't have to hit notes right? Because sometimes those recordings start and I can't imagine, you know, what key they're playing it in. Right. So, so I watch people start a song and, and I know, Oh, that's going to get real high pretty soon. Right? <laughs> and so, so I don't have to worry about that. And number two, bust the move is nobody's favorite song. So I'm not pissing off anybody and ruining the memory. When you sing open arms, people sing open arms by journey, somebody, had their first right. makeout section of that song. And that is a very hard song to sing, right? And so I'm never going to have that with Bust a Move. I am going Bust a Move? They played that at my sister's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that may happen, but I would say the percentages were lower than most other songs, right? When you say you're standing on the wall like you were Poindexter, nobody's going to say, oh, Poindexter was my dog who died. <laughs> and now it's time for Rad Libs. I've written a story and I've left out some parts of speech. If you give me those parts of speech together, we're going to make a hilarious story. Are you ready to play? Yes. I need a first name. Any first name in the whole wide world. Frederick. Yes. We're off to a great start. I need a body part. A uh, fingernail. I need a, a drug. And why am I acting like there's a time limit on my answers? I feel like I, I'm yelling like a game show as quick you as I can. There are no wrong answers, and I like it either way. I like people that take forever because they think they're going to get it wrong. And I also like people that treat it like a Rorschach, like, fungus! Like, it doesn't matter. That's yeah. what I was just doing. I'm not sure why. I was like, I was rushing and screaming, and I realized, what am I, <laughs> is there a prize? It's fun. It does up the intensity of the game. Um, a drug. A drug. Is peyote a drug? Yes! It's like, uh, it's like Native American mushrooms, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like in a, in a caramel. I never took it, but that was one I kind of regret not doing. Right. And, yeah. And you know why sometimes doing doing these kind of podcasts scare me is because I lead. Here's how boring my life is. For a long time, my story was that the only illegal drug I've ever actually seen is marijuana, and now it's not really illegal. Like I am that boring. <laughs> you need to see something illegal now. I could point you in the direction of a few comics, and you'll see some shit you don't want to see. Uh, an adjective. Friendly. Yes. <laughs> That's the right answer. That's what I was looking for. Uh, a fruit or vegetable? A guava. Yes, guava. <laughs> okay, this is getting very interesting. A holiday. St. Patty's Day. Yes. Uh, a verb ending in ing. Um, squawking. Squawking. <laughs> I love this. I don't know why that. Man, my brain just threw that one out before I thought of it. I mean, every time you give a word, the story takes a turn. <laughs> uh, an appliance. A waffle maker. Yes. Uh, an occupation. Blacksmith. Also would have been a good occupation to win a fight, I think. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That'd be a good Hot one. Irons? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think they could beat a gynecologist. I need a, <laughs> a weapon. Uh, nunchucks. A price. I recently picked up a, uh, 
a wonderful Cyrus O'Leary's pie for four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Yeah, it was. It was on sale. What kind of pie is Cyrus O'Leary's pie? Oh, I, that's right. It's regional. Cyrus O'Leary's is. Uh, uh, it used to be a restaurant in Spokane, and I always used to go there and get their pie, and it's really good. And I went there one time, and the doors are locked, and the windows are boarded, and I was. I really thought I was going to cry on for on on the on the street in Spokane. Have a little cry pie, ah. But but it turns out. Even though the restaurant closed, the they kept the pie thing going, and they are in grocery stores all around Washington. So they even they even come out here to Seattle. So for the low yeah. low price of four ninety nine. Not all, no, not all, no, no. They're rarely four ninety nine. But I I I I had a victory. I had a little exciting moment. So I'm going to share that number with you, with your rabbit. So you can you can keep doing comedy now. <laughs> <laughs> I need. A, I can a... I can live another day. <laughs> Uh, a verb. Skip. I need another verb. Brag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bragging about the skipping. An exclamation, something you exclaim. Like, damn it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, a dramatic gesture. Holding a boombox over your head. Yes. Uh, an apology. Um, my bad. <laughs> We have a story, my friend. Oh, I'm so excited. We have a fantastic story. Well done. Because of your love of pies, this is called In Pie We Crust. Oh, nice. No one makes better pie than my Aunt Frederick. <laughs> Just thinking about it makes my fingernails water. She says that the secret ingredient is love, but I'm pretty sure the real secret ingredient is peyote. <laughs> She calls it Aunt Frederick's Friendly Guava Pie. She serves it every year on St. Patrick's Day. Some of my fondest childhood memories are watching Aunt Frederick squawking at the pie crust and then putting in the waffle maker to cook. That works. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I think something's wrong with Aunt Frederick, but I like her. Uh, she's made her famous pie for hundreds of bake sales, church dinners, and the annual Blacksmith's Ball. I think my aunt could have her own cooking show. We'll definitely have drama, because if she catches you trying to sneak a piece before the pie is cooled, she'll whack you with her nunchucks. <laughs> She's got layers. <laughs> I've told her for years to share her gift with the world, and she finally and she is finally making her pie available to the public. You too can have Aunt Frederick's friendly guava pie for only $4.99. You can order it online at eatskipbrag.com. <laughs> One bite, and you and your whole family will be saying, Damn it, that's good pie. And if you're not completely satisfied, we'll hold a boombox over our heads and say, My bad. <laughs> <laughs> well done, although, Kermit. Although I wish I wish I'd gone farther than the damn it, though. I really, I really <laughs> Damn it now. That should have been something much harder. <laughs> well, tell the viewers and listeners uh, what you've got coming up and where they can find you. Basically, if you look for my name um, on everything, it's it's at Kermit Appeal. It's K-E-R-M-E-T, uh, not I. So K-E-R-M-E-T, last name A-P-E-I-O. And that's me at pretty much everything because every time I sign up for a social media, Kermit Appeal is available <laughs> every time. Guys, find friend, follow Kermit. You are hilarious, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you so much. And I got to say, uh, uh, that, that week we had there in Vegas, man, I so enjoyed watching you work and then getting to know you as a person. Uh, absolute joy. Interview complete. Saying goodbye to Kermit by throwing pies at his face. Sorry, Kermit. We're still working with Computer Lady on how to say goodbye. But guys, how great is Kermit Appeal? Find him, follow him, be a friend. And, uh, and thank you, Kermit, for coming on the show. Um, for everybody that watched or listened, thank you so much. Please like, follow, and subscribe to the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. It lets me know that you're watching. It makes the podcast feel super special, and it lets you know when new episodes are up. Find me, Kristen Key, through my website, kristenkey.com. Follow me on all my social media, and, uh, and look out, because next time I'm going to bring you another hilarious comedian. We're going to chit-chat, play five quick questions, and do a rad lib together, and then everybody goes home smiling. So until next time, bye. We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello. some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello. people, gonna learn a lot of stuff.
stop, 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 st